Hey everybody, it's Savage Skull, and today we're going to talk about how Five Nights at Freddy's was so gripping as a series. It went from one man to an entire team of people making a VR title in five years. Also, before we start, please subscribe because we're getting new viewers every single day, and if you are a new viewer or a returning viewer who just hasn't subscribed, please hit subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot, and I can't keep making videos without you. And there's a special surprise when you hit the next subscriber milestone. Okay, let's talk Five Nights at Freddy's. In August 2014, a man by the name of Scott Cawthon was a struggling game developer working at Dollar General to make ends meet. He was about to give up on the game dev dream when he released the game we know as Five Nights at Freddy's. Immediately, people frantically bought the game, analyzed every bit of story, gameplay, and drove themselves mad over it. The reason why it became so popular is still up in the air, but I think I have an explanation. Five Nights at Freddy's had such a simple gameplay mechanic, and the only thing needed to play was a mouse. The game file wasn't too large, so regardless of how garbage you thought your computer was, you could still play with little to no interruptions. The game was also cheap. It was only $5. It was fun to watch, make videos about, theorize about, and as fans will later know, even read about. The game had simple and very memorable characters, and the game was different no matter who played it. The success, however, I believe, is behind the mind of the game developer himself. When Scott realized that people were flocking to his game at a remarkable rate, he decided to start production on the next game, and later made a post on his website saying that the game would be out by next year. This is far from the truth. Five months after the first game's release, we got the second game in the franchise, Five Nights at Freddy's 2, or the shiny and creative reboot of the first game. Immediately, YouTube was flooded by people theorizing about this thing, making gameplay videos and even music videos enter the scene. With the fan base growing, Scott knew he had to keep it up, and four months after the release of Five Nights 2, came the release of Five Nights 3. Five Nights at Freddy's 3 was rumored to be the last game in a trilogy of horror games, and in my opinion, gave a great conclusion to the Five Nights story, by burning the last animatronic and setting the souls of all the remaining children free. Nope, that's, <laughs> that's not the last game. Did you think that was the last game? Due to fans and the creator himself feeling that Five Nights at Freddy's 3 was a bit rushed, Almost immediately, he started putting teasers for the next game in the franchise, Five Nights at Freddy's 4. In my opinion, these teasers are the coolest things that have ever been on Scott's website, and as you can imagine, theorists went insane at the sheer mention of the game, and what was to be revealed, the supposed bite of 87. When the game was released on July 3rd, 2015, you can imagine the excitement players had, because it was released four months early. In just one year, the franchise had four games under its belt. However, Five Nights at Freddy's 4 was expected to be the last. In the game itself, as you beat the final night at Freddy's, it says, the end. As you might be able to tell, people were really sad to have this wonderful creation come to an end. A great story had been told, and it seemed that all the mysteries had been solved. And with the series' final notes, the creator came out and said, perhaps some things are best left forgotten forever. Well, I think I'm gonna have to cut it here at part one because this took forever to make and please subscribe and like the video so we can make a part two which goes from FNAF world all the way on. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in part two. See ya.